Okay, this is the beginning of the online registration uh, series, and I'm going to have six parts. This is part one, and part one is going to begin with an overview of what the online registration can look like uh, to the end user. Uh, the subsequent uh, uh, videos, two through six, will give you more information about how to uh, manipulate each page so it can meet your team's needs. So I'm going to click the online registration button on the site, and the first page we're going to come to is the parent form. And uh, I'm going to point out a couple things about uh, the form that's uh, similar on several forms. Uh, number one, you'll see what step you're on in the registration process. You can see that this is the first of seven pages. Uh, secondly, you can see this header information, and uh, this is completely customizable. And so you can provide some welcoming information and some uh, instructions for your registrants so they'll know how to fill out some of the forms on the field and such. Uh, you can see that there are several red fields in red here. These are all required fields. Uh, the ones in black are not. And um, uh, you can either fill it out from scratch here and start typing in your name, or if you've already got your name in the system, and just to speed things up, um, you can actually put in your email address and it will pull up the information uh, that the system already has for you. So uh, you don't have to start from scratch. Now all we have to do is to edit any things that, that may have changed since uh, last season, for instance. Um, to point out a couple other things uh, on the page, number one, you can uh, rename these fields. There are hidden fields that you can't even see, but that you can make use of if there's more information that you need to capture about your family, your parents, or families. Um, you can also make fields required or not required, so that's completely up to you. Uh, there's um, some checkboxes over here. Each email or cell phone um, field has a checkbox, and uh, if parents check those checkboxes, it posit positively indicates an opt-in. They want to receive emails or text messages from the site. Uh, also, um, I should point out that uh, email addresses are the logins, uh, the login usernames that uh, a family will use. Uh, there's one more field on here I want to point out. Here it says Appramont Resident. Uh, that's what we call, that's what I call the member field. And this field and checkbox specifically correspond to uh, fees that you set up. So you can set up a fee structure that applies to members or non-members, residents or non-residents, uh, or things of that nature. And while a parent doesn't see it here, uh, it is an explicit link to the fees. And I'll show you the fee setup uh, in part two of this video series. So once the form is filled out, all uh, required fields have been filled in, um, we can uh, continue to the uh, swimmer form. And once we get on the swimmer form, a uh, similar header, you can see we're on step two now. Uh, we've got more instructions about the form. You can see that the swimmer form, actually you'll put all your swimmers on this one form. So if you have you know, more than one swimmer, uh, you can add as many as 10 swimmers per family here just by clicking uh, add another swimmer. Okay. Um, uh, there's another uh, uh, item that I'll point out here. Because I'm logged in as an administrator, I have access to this pink uh, field, uh, which is an administrator-only viewable field. So parents won't see this, but this is a field I can use to track whether or not, in this case, for instance, I have the birth certificate turned in for this form. Um, again, all these fields are customizable. You can make them required or not required. Uh, different on the swimmer form is that we have these special fee considerations or swimmer waivers. Uh, and I've got two things here. One is uh, for this particular team, uh, they can choose to also be on the dive team. And you can see there's a fee associated with that. And they can choose to, to, to be a diver or add diving or not. Uh, and this is the league fee. And at the league level, your league can impose a fee per swimmer. Uh, and Swim Team US will take care of the collection of those fees and remittance to the league so that the teams don't have to worry about it, but it will show up on the registration form, uh, making it easy for them to uh, pay it um, uh, pay it, and uh, have it remitted to the league. Okay. Once we're finished uh, entering our swimmer information, uh, again, we can click Continue. And we'll show up next, step three, on the waiver form. Waivers can be a number of things. Um, this is a league waiver. Again, it's set up at the league level. The team can't uh, do anything really to change this. However, this is for a league form. It might be a concussion form or something like that. If the league actually needs you to print it out and put an actual signature on it and turn it in the piece of paper, well, we can't do all of that. But what we can do is we can link the document, and you would just click here to open the document, and then it would be up to the parent to print it and sign it and turn it in. But at least it's a positive acknowledgment. Um, makes it easy for them to see the document 
do what they need to do right here and now during the registration process and check that they promise to do so. Uh, waivers can also be things like medical releases, photo waivers, uh, volunteer participation, um, promises, uh, disciplinary action information, things of that nature. And you can see that you can also add fees to these options if necessary. Each parent or family must check at least one checkbox for every waiver or they cannot continue and complete the registration process. So it does require a check mark on every single waiver. And you can see that you can have just one checkbox that they must check, or you can offer up to three options um, with or without fees, uh, and they can just select one. Uh, then we'll continue. Uh, next will be on the volunteer page. And the volunteer page, uh, uh, this allows a parent to actually go ahead and sign up for uh, their volunteer positions uh, in advance of the season right here and now. It makes it very convenient for them to select their positions uh, and decide um, uh, what they want to do and uh, get their requirement out of the way, at least sign up for their requirement. Uh, you can do it in a number of ways. There's three, op three basic options. One is you can just select preferences. So in other words, a parent could indicate whether uh, they want to be a timer, a runner, a ribbon uh, ribbon sticker person, uh, computer operator, bullpen, whatever it may be, they can just put preferences. Um, this is a little different. This actually allows them to sign up for specific positions. And uh, there are two options within that. One is to require them to sign up for uh, the requirement in full right now before they complete registration. And that's the way I've got it set up. Uh, the other option is to allow them to sign up if they want, or they don't have to if they don't want to, but they don't have to meet the requirement here uh, in the registration process. That gives them a little more flexibility. Uh, once they pick them from the drop down or they click the form to open up the full volunteer form, uh, they can uh, pick a position, update the total, and then if they've met the requirement, if you've got a requirement, uh, then they can uh, now move on and continue to the next page. So I'm going to hit continue. Next, we have the product page. We're on step five. We're almost done with the process. You can see that uh, this particular example has two different products you can get. Uh, one is a ribbon book where I can uh, indicate a quantity and then I can add it to the cart. You can see the cart totals right here. Um, and then uh, you can empty the cart if you like, or you can add one back. Uh, here's a, a t-shirt. You can set up with it up to two SKUs. You don't have to use two SKUs, but you can do colors and sizes, for instance that uh, parents can select and then uh, enter a quantity and add to the cart. Again, you can see the cart total and you can empty the cart. Uh, once you're done selecting any products that you want to purchase, you can hit continue to complete the checkout process. Uh, so again, some more information about uh, where the money should go to. If you're sending in a check, you can review the parent information you entered, uh, the contact information, emails, phone numbers, addresses, uh, you can see the swimmers that you entered and uh, the different fees associated with uh, their selections. Uh, you can see the other fees. This was from um, this was from uh, the uh, one of the waivers on the waiver page, uh, and then you can see the product orders separately for a total uh, amount due here. Uh, and then you can also manage the payment options. In this case, we've got three payment options. One is online payment via credit card, uh, which is processed through PayPal. Uh, pay later, which basically means you're going to pay by cash or check, or perhaps you've already written a check. And then finally, if you're a club that takes a member number as a form of payment, you can do that as well, and you can capture the member number here. Um, so once you select a payment, uh, a payment button, uh, you will be checked out. Uh, it sends an email to the registrant. It also sends an email uh, to the team rep who's managing the registration process. And uh, the registration process is complete. The parent information is in the system. The swimmer information is in the system. The registration information uh, is all available. And uh, at the uh, end of the video series, we'll go over reviewing that. So the next step is going to be uh, setting up this registration process for your team. And that's going to be part two. We're going to go over the forms, the fees, and a few other, uh, a few other items.